hi guys and welcome back to my channel i am officially back doing normal reviews you know that don't well there are going to be a couple that go for two and a half days but you know back to talking about other things going on in the world current things uh, all of these are reviews that i've done weeks ago and I'm only finally talking about them so I know technically speaking in terms of YouTube these are late but hey if I reviewed them I'm gonna post about them on here so um I know and I'm telling you now so you have a chance to turn off if you don't want to hear what I have to say uh as you can see from the title I am reviewing The Haunting of Hill House I already know that my opinion on this is an unpopular one because I didn't actually enjoy it. Um, and I know like 95% of audiences who watched it have absolutely loved it and raved about it, which kind of made me feel it's even more important, even if it's late, to post my review of it because I know that at least myself and there was at least two other people I know who didn't like this. But I know that when it comes to opinions, people still feel as though they're not allowed to have an opposing opinion or they're not allowed to disagree with the masses and that's just a load of crap. So if my opinion is considered unpopular, I don't care. I'm speaking um, A, to show that there is variety in opinions no matter what the topic is and also in hopes to encourage people to just remember that you don't have to agree with everybody you know it would be a really fucking boring place if we all thought the exact same way about movies because then we'd only get like one type of movie oh good god that'd be so boring i would never be entertained anyway so enough of my chitter chatter i will no, oh, I'm still gonna be chit chatting, so whatever. But anyway, getting onto it, uh, here is my review for The Haunting of Hill House. The Haunting of Hill House is an American supernatural horror television series created by Meg Flanagan and is loosely based on the 1959 novel of the same name by Shirley Jackson. Flashing between past and present, a fractured family confronts haunting memories of their old home and the terrifying events that drove them from it. While I was busy watching every horror movie under the sun for October, everyone was filling up my Twitter feed talking about this new Netflix series called The Haunting of Hill House, and the tweets didn't stop. One after another, person after person, raving about it like crazy, calling it the best show they have ever seen, the scariest show they had ever seen. Instantly, I was worried, and then a good friend and fellow YouTuber began watching it and didn't have a kind word to say. So it was clear there would be no in-between on this one for me. I would either love it or hate it. And it looks like we have ourselves another don't breathe situation. A product surrounded by acclaim from everyone but me. God damn it. I did not enjoy this. On the whole, I found it incredibly dull. Out of 10 episodes, I jumped three times and I did love those three moments. I live for a jump scare. But the reason why they were so effective for me is due to the absence of anything for 20 to 30 minutes. When nothing is happening and nothing is grabbing your attention, something jumping out to scare the crap out of you is going to be more effective. As effective as those jumps were, they felt so out of place. Majority of the episodes don't feel about hauntings or ghosts, and so when one suddenly appears, it doesn't feel like it belongs there. So there is a love-hate relationship with these three individual moments. Even though I know there are ghosts on screen in the backgrounds, but most people don't notice them and they, frankly I didn't. What I ended up hating most was the timeline. The timeline is hard to keep up with. One minute we're in the past, then we're in the present, then we're in the present but one day ago or two days ago or an hour ago or in the next episode we're looking at the same time but from someone else's perspective and I can fully acknowledge the genius and brilliance behind being able to link all the moments together or how to make time appear fluid by having the past and present interconnect in a way where they become one but it's not enough. Some of the dialogue in the final episode discussing this sounded so much like a direct quote from Witchblade. It wasn't a new concept. I've seen it done in many films and shows and while I think the subtle overlapping in this version is excellent, the fact it is so difficult to follow made it less impressive for me. I have been more blown away by this technique in other projects. 
Up until the last two episodes, this didn't feel like it should be called The Haunting of Hill House. Majority of each episode does not take place in the past in Hill House. It takes place in the present or a time when the characters are adults. I am watching them get married, have jobs, have children or try to have children. I'm watching episode after episode be about a dysfunctional family dealing with resentment issues or drug addiction and then there's suddenly a scene from the past in Hill House showing a ghost or something supernatural and I feel as though what this show is meant to be about is not what I'm seeing. It really felt like Hill House and the Supernatural were all background characters and they weren't the focus. And given the name of the show, I felt like I was not being given what was sold to me. I loved Hill House. I love the exterior they chose for it and I think the interior they built for the house was fantastic and so perfect. I think the sculpture department overdid it because there were about 50 sculptures in every hallway but that aside I think they did create something that felt alive. When you saw it, it felt like its own character, but I wish it had been written that way. The writing doesn't do the set justice or showcase it enough, and it's because of this I wish the entire story took place there. I would have loved to watch them live and breathe that atmosphere in every episode. The casting was quite perfect. The actors looked like they could be related and most impressively, the actors they chose to play the sisters all grown up most definitely looked like the older versions of the children. And on top of that, they looked like their mother. So I think they did great at casting and I think the consistency in the performances of the young actors and older actors brought it together. There were small things carried through that made it feel believable that this is so and so all grown up. While I think the performances were great, I don't think I liked a single character. Everyone is written as a person who can deliver a monologue, but no one is saying anything worthwhile. Someone sees something or experiences something and no one chooses to talk about it. Someone is sad or scared and no one wants to talk about it. The only thing the characters want to talk about is some metaphorical speech they feel compelled to deliver or telling their relatives how much they don't like them but no one ever really says what needs to be said. Dad has the most to say of all the characters and yet I had to wait till episode 8 for him to open his mouth and speak. Out of 10 episodes I shouldn't have to wait that long. I didn't find the characters enjoyable, many I didn't even find relatable and none of them felt like real human beings they just felt like characters written on paper. I also didn't find consistency in the characters themselves. For starters, it took me two episodes to be able to figure out who was who, and it wasn't until episode four that I learned Nell and Luke were twins, and that's only because it was said out loud. Why did I not know this fact, which is made in such an important fact in episode four until episode four? Why not establish this right off the bat? For 10 episodes, I felt as though I was playing catch up, learning about each character and their life, many things I didn't feel I needed to know. I don't feel I needed to know Luke was a drug addict. It didn't contribute anything more than it was a distraction. I didn't need to know Nell was married and widowed. It didn't provide me with a deeper insight into the story of the characters. I certainly didn't need to learn near the end of the season, Shirley had a fling six years ago. So much effort put into irrelevant storylines. I don't understand these choices, all they did was increase my boredom. Another inconsistency is the fact their mother Olivia goes to such effort to tell Theo that she is sensitive, another word for gifted, that she is sensitive too and so was her grandmother and yet not once does Olivia believe or suspect anything supernatural going on. She keeps telling everyone it's their dream, she says her husband knows she's sensitive but he still doesn't believe anything till he lives it for himself. You can't go and establish characters as being gifted and then not even have them understand or recognize when something isn't normal or human. Theo is gifted, she knows what she can do, but anytime someone says they saw a ghost, she's right there to tell them they're crazy. The hypocrisy makes no sense to me. It's not so much as running away from acknowledging it because she acknowledges her gift fine, but anything beyond that isn't worth it. Things like this irritated me. 
Even by the end of the show, the inclusion of the character Abigail made no sense to me up until the very end. Until the character was side by side the Dudleys, I was certain she wasn't real, that she was something created by the house, and when I'm told I'm wrong, it's so brief and insignificant that I still don't care and I still can't see the character as having ever been real. When it came to writing characters, I felt this was the show's greatest weakness for me. I cried during the final episode, it was a sad and emotional conclusion without a doubt, but that doesn't make it good. If you've ever met me, you would know I cry at the drop of a hat when it comes to film and television, so my crying means very little. I did honestly hate how this series ended, I still don't know what happened to Olivia, was she possessed or was she driven insane, why does the house do what it does, what does it want and why does it want it, how did the house come to be, what made the house this way? If only one family lived in it prior to the Cranes, why were there so many spirits? Again, it's called The Haunting of Hill House, but the series is not about Hill House, it's about the Crane family. You did not explain anything about the house, its nature or purpose to me, and so I'm left confused with far more questions than answers, and I hate that. The show establishes that this house feeds on people, it kills people and keeps their souls. So if that's the case, why was the final episode depicting the house in such a romantic way? Making it out to be this lovely place for spirits to reside. It's a murderous killing machine that traps souls inside it, preventing them from moving on. Why are we trying to make that seem like a lovely, beautiful thing? For 10 episodes, we're left wondering and itching to know what's behind the red door. I expected it to be some fascinating secret that would answer all my questions about the house. I was left extremely disappointed. While it's cool to say this room is basically a soul-sucking room of requirements, becoming what the person desires to lure them in and feed off them, what did that achieve? What was the room's purpose? You told me the number five, but didn't tell me what makes five. Is it two plus three or is it four plus one or 10 minus five? What? I invested so much time to be given so little. While there are good moments, it came off as dull and disappointing. So much of the series was predictable for me. The dialogue is plucked from the book so many times and it's the same dialogue used in the two haunting movies, so I knew the words and could say them along with the characters. Sure, I think it's clever how they've worked them in, but it's still with stuff I already know. The camera work and surprises were not surprising. I predicted 90% of them before they happened. I knew where the camera would pan to. I knew what it would blur out or focus on, I knew when a light would flash on, I knew when something benign would become supernatural. Not much felt unexpected. Learning the overlap in the timeline was unexpected, I admit that, but again the speech about it felt so identical to Witchblade that I was once again bored because I'd heard it before and the Witchblade version was better. The Haunting of Hill House has proven to me once again that if something is hyped, there's a good chance I won't enjoy it. It was okay to watch, but I don't find it memorable. I wouldn't watch it again, and I don't care if there is a second season. I felt no sadness when it was over because it never gave me a reason to get invested, and it never gave me a character to root for. The characters were irritating, the writing was annoying and scattered, and it was just on a whole boring. It just didn't feel like what I was promised. So that's my review for The Haunting of Hill House. You can disagree with me all you want, I don't care. I know so many people loved it and that's completely cool. I mean, we don't have to agree. I'm cool with that. I'm happy to be over here, not liking the show, no sweat off my back. But please don't get, you know, if you want to talk about it in the comments, that's fine. But please don't get into the comments and try to say, well, you misunderstood it. No, I just didn't like it. Okay, the, that's that's quite possible. I can understand something and not like it. So anyway, um, but yeah, I would still welcome you to comment and uh, share your thoughts on it, even though <laughs> even though I know pretty much everybody loved it. But I do especially encourage you, if you are someone who also happened to not like it, definitely comment below. But I can totally see this getting dislikes on it. Just like, I can't believe you hated this. Well, believe it. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching today's video. I'm really happy to be getting back into talking about, you know, other things, even though this is another horror thing. Ooh. <laughs> and I'm about to do another one soon. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.